Thank you for joining us, sticking with us, and to reward you, it's Killer Instinct time. Joining me on stage is Ken, and we are going to be talking about uh, werewolves fighting against cyborg warriors. That's right. Because Killer Instinct is coming back. It's coming to the Xbox One as a launch title? Yes. Excellent. And uh, you guys are showing that off here at the show floor. Yes, we are. So how, how, how has that been going? Do you have a gauge for how people are enjoying just like beating the crap out of each other? Uh, indeed. So we've been showing, obviously, at every show since we announced at E3. Uh -huh. And the cadence we've been going for is uh, show Jago and Saberwolf at E3. And yep. we announced Glacius, mm -hmm. which we have some video of today. Excellent. We went to Evo, and, which was just last weekend. Evo, and big fighting game. If you folks don't know what Evo is, you should have been on GameSpot that last weekend because it was awesome. That was amazing. Yeah. So, and then we showed Glacius is playable, and we teased the next character, which we were going to show playable at Gamescom and uh, at PAX, and then we have another character we'll tease, go to Tokyo Game Show, and kind of keep driving that all the way up to launch. Very cool, and I think we're actually seeing some footage from Evo here right now, Jago versus Glacius. And uh, I remember Glacius from Killer Instinct being a lot smoother than his sort of jaggedy counterpart here. How has it been for you guys updating, you know, sort of reimagining the character models for these these iconic characters? So what we're trying to do, for, for those familiar with fighting games, um, I worked on the original KI on KI2. Um, every character I built was basically a rushdown. So uh -huh. that's a character that wants to get right up in your face and beat you as fast as they can. That's Jago, it's Saberwolf. But what we want to do this time around is kind of complete the triangle. There's really three types of fighters in most fighting games. You, uh -huh. have, you have zoner, you have grappler, and you have rushdown. And you have hybrids that sit kind of in between those, uh, those peaks. Yep. Glacius, we decided, although many people loved him, and I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Glacius fan, let's try and make Glacius into a zoner. Someone who has ability to combo you from far away. And you're seeing right there, he did the, the uh, ground blossom and then auto doubled from three quarters of the way across the screen. You mm -hmm. can actually do full combos from someone who's across the screen. So a lot of what we did with Glacius was, how do you how do you zone? How do you keep somebody away from you? You know, his throw is a good example. Someone like Jago, when he goes to throw you, he's gonna put you close to him so he can then attack you as you're getting up. Yep. Glacius will throw you as far away as he possibly can, all the way across the screen. And a good player will then set use that to set up uh, an opener from across the screen. Mm -hmm. And so you got, you really, you know, this, these sort of terms you're using there, the, the rushdown character, the zoner, the grappler, this, you guys are into, you know, the nitty gritty of fighting philosophy and fighting mechanics, uh, which, you know, a lot of fighting game players really appreciate, but can also be, it can also be a challenge to get there for someone who's coming new to the game. Yes. So how do you, how do you sort of pave that path for, for people coming to Killer Instinct? So the original Killer Instinct, I mean, one of the goals was to try and allow people to do big combos. Yeah. Build a system where you could do something that didn't quite uh, require the same amount of, I know exactly how to do this move on exactly this frame, mm -hmm. right? Which is what a lot of fighting games are about. KI is definitely about timing. You need to understand uh, when to do moves and how. But to get a big, long combo, it's actually pretty simple. So we're going to build a very in-depth practice mode into the game mm -hmm. so that anybody, really, if you can if you're familiar with a controller, yep. you should be able to learn how to do anything from 10 up to 50 or more hits, you know, at least 50? when you're talking about the Ultra Combo, yes. All right, Ken, that is what I like to hear. Uh, so, when you guys bring this, bring this game to a show like San Diego Comic Con and put it out on the show floor, it's very different than showcasing it at Evo, uh, a, a conference for, or a convention for fighting game fans and aficionados. And so, what, how is it, how did it perform at Evo? I mean, you guys are sort of, new there so that you know you don't have people who have been playing this game for years and years and years but you still are putting it into the hands of some very skilled players yes well again it's the skilled players pick it up in minutes mm -hmm. and you know one of my favorite stories from uh, evo was a guy came into the booth the first day started playing at 8 45 and went undefeated until five o'clock at night whoa and at that point he he definitely knew what he was doing yeah, this guy named Todd Peters. and you know we played him from the team and he actually won one out of three against uh -huh. our best player now, you contrast that with on the show floor here. Again, if you, if you understand how to play fighting games, there's sort of a language. Mm -hmm. You know, you have fireball, dragon punch, hurricane kick type moves. Sure. You have charge moves. And if somebody understands that vernacular, they can just jump right in and you can go, okay, do a hurricane kick. And then when you hit them, just hit any other button. That's an auto double. You'll get some more hits. Mm -hmm. And then try a fireball. And, oh, look, you did six or seven hits. And once they start experimenting, for anybody, anybody, anybody that understands a fighting game can do 10, 12 hits. Now you take Saberwolf, uh, 
was very intentionally in all three of the Killer Instinct games uh -huh. meant to be the beginner's character. Okay. If you don't understand anything about a fighting game, what Saber Wolf does is all of his special moves are away towards moves. Mm -hmm. So he, away is how you block. Yep. So it's kind of the first thing you want to teach somebody. You're setting up the blocking. You basically, and just like, go yeah, away keep you alive. towards hit any button, you get a special move. Hit any other button, you get an auto, auto double. Then away towards again with any button, and you get some end finishers. Yep. And so here you're watching Jago versus Saber Wolf. Yep. And you can see someone there hitting a few uh, regular punches there. Jump in, get an auto double. He actually got, he actually let his combo drop. But our goal is kind of exactly what you said. If I were to look at the three shows, E3 is a lot of hardcore gamers, but maybe the, the percentage of fighting game freaks is lower. Yep. Evo is absolutely, let's go show the hardest of hardcore fighters and see how they react. Uh -huh. And you go to Comic-Con, and I was seeing people that, a nice mix of people that knew the game 18 years ago, obviously play modern fighting games, and then there's groups that had never played a game, and yet they're there having fun, banging out little combos with uh, Saberwolf. Very cool. Uh, so, you know, each show you're bringing out more characters, uh, and Gamescom is the next one, folks. Can get that announcement. Yes. Uh, but that, that leads me to talk, let's talk a little bit about how you guys are going to be launching Killer Instinct on the Xbox One, because you've got, you've got a bit of a different strategy than just, it's going to be available, you can buy it for this amount of money and get the whole game. Yes. So lay it out for us a little bit, because I, it, there was a little bit of, uh, just, I'll leave it in your hands to clear it up yes. for folks. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to announce the exact pricing strategy when we get to Gamescom. Sure. But the idea is I want to get as many people playing fighting games as used to play fighting games. I think there's a huge fighting game community now. Yep. But if you think about when Street Fighter II first came out, the numbers were bigger. More people played fighting games on SNES and Genesis than today play on modern consoles. Oh, really? So the idea was, how do I build a fighting game that the fighting game community can just go buy, uh -huh. they get the whole game, you know, we'll obviously have more characters that come out over time. But what if somebody is just curious? Well, we're going to take Jago, and you could say he's a demo. Some people call it free-to-play. It's not a free-to-play game. I'll come back to that in a second. Jago is a demo where you have everything. Yep. So what's free is you have Jago, Jago's practice mode. You can fight against any AI character. But more importantly, you're in the one, the one shard of the online game community. Mm -hmm. So you can take your Jago out and fight against anybody even if it's a character that you, quote, don't have. Okay. So it allows you to see and experience all the other characters. So let's say you didn't want to buy everything, and you decide that you want, well, I kind of like Glacius. Maybe I should, oh, look, you can buy just Glacius. Okay, so you can slowly expand your, your arsenal, your yes. repertoire. And again, I think if you think about even the hardest of hardcore fighting game fans, what they tend to do is you buy this game, it's got X number of characters. You're great at one, you dabble in two or three more. Uh -huh. It's only really the super hardcore that know every character can get and every it, fighting get deep game. with every character, yeah. So to, to drive the most people back into the fighting game community as possible, we want to make it easy for people to come in and have some fun. Very cool, Ken. Yeah, I like that a lot. You know, just just paving the way, getting them, getting folks, it's, you're sort of like leaving the door open and inviting them in. And yeah. that's, that's a, a real nice philosophy because, you know, fighting games, are incredibly fun, but you know the, the competitive nature of them can sometimes be a little daunting. I know I personally am fairly terrible at fighting games, but I, I really, I really appreciate that that effort on the part of the fighting game community to sort of open those doors and yeah. reach out. So another thing we're doing with Xbox One, um, we obviously had matchmaking this generation. Yep. But matchmaking this generation tended to be tended to be. Uh, exclusively about skill mm -hmm. and we obviously want to move that forward you should be playing against people that are at your same skill level sure but we're also going to take other things into account you know like player behavior if someone is always online cursing then they might <laughs> start ending up in my skill level people that act like I do oh, okay more importantly we're also looking more broadly if, if the player wants they can do things like um, well I, I play a whole bunch of Call of Duty for example uh -huh. and I also play Killer Instinct Oh, well, interesting. Maybe you could match me with people that also play Call of Duty and then let me know that. You know, it, we have a, um, the friend system is significantly larger on Xbox One than it used to mm -hmm. be. You can basically have as many friends as you want, but you can also follow people. And it's easy once you've played someone to see, oh, oh, that, oh, Call of Duty, that's what I always play, oh, Call of Duty. And so I think some people will start to see patterns, I think, but it's just way easier to make a friend. Mm -hmm. Maybe you meet some guy online, you play Killer Instinct eight or ten games, and then you say, well, I gotta run because I'm gonna go play Rise, my, my other favorite game. Oh, I, I was gonna go play Rise, let's go. And you can actually party up with a button press and then launch Rise right from the party. And maybe that guy that you met on Killer Instinct now becomes one step closer to being somebody that you might 
That's not, neat. Not hate. And you know, <laughs> and at E3 actually, you guys also showed off another part of the Xbox One's uh, new functionality in using the sort of you were using like a highlight reel mechanic yes. uh, where you sort of it. It auto-selected clips from your fight, and then you share that video with your friends. Yes, and, and it's it's not automatic. It's not so automatic. What, so you get to you get to pick your pick your moments. Yes, and so we, we actually showed a video of that this morning at our panel. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Project Upload. So the idea is, you're always recording. So we have a we have a ring buffer game DVR basically. So the last five minutes of any game you're playing is mm -hmm. always being stored locally on your hard drive. Uh huh. And you can decide, you know, uh, let me let me give you two scenarios. So scenario one, I'm playing online. I just did the best thing ever. I can't pause, I'm playing online. Sure. You can say, Xbox, record that. It'll grab the last 30 seconds and save it for you to play with later. Okay. So now let's say you're not playing online and you do the best combo or you have the best fight ever. You can finish after that fight, that thing you just did was, is within the last five minutes. Mm -hmm. You can go into that last five minutes and scrub it for the best stuff. I want that four seconds, and this 10 seconds, and this 30 seconds, and then I want that ultra combo. Uh -huh. We have things, uh, basically a wrapper, so you can put it before, you know, something that comes up before and after. The video we showed said best of Evo. Yep. And you can also, if you'd like, voice over and even put in some stuff from Connect Camera, do picture in picture. Very cool. You guys really, you know, as, as a launch title, do you feel, you kind of have a the privilege or, or responsibility to sort of flex your muscle on the new system, sort of show off that tech. That's going to be very cool for folks to experience this fall. Of course, exact launch date not announced, but it's going to be available for the Xbox One right when that comes out. That's right. Very cool. Killer Instinct. Ken, thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. Nice to see you. Nice to chat about Killer Instinct. Folks, we're going to take a look now at another uh, Homer Rabara special from the show floor. Checking out something called Rubies.